right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I've got for you guys today, we've got to talk about this update from Good Vito, Vitaly Ugonikov. As he prepares to make his pro debut in September, he's just a few months away from that pro debut, exactly nine weeks out in this update, so about two months in one week. I think these updates, aside from the uh, front double bicep that we got maybe a week or two ago, are some of the most impressive that we've ever seen from Good Vito. A side chest, a rear lat spread, and an abs and thighs. And like I said last time, I think Good Vito is a true freak. I don't think he gets as much credit as he really deserves. And an example of that, I want to put this side chest next to Nick Walker's side chest that he posted yesterday as well. Now, obviously, Good Vito is competing a lot sooner than Nick because Good Vito doesn't know whether or not he's going to be qualified for the Olympia. So he's not prepping for the Olympia while Nick is. So Nick's 17 weeks out at 290 pounds. Good Vito didn't specify his weight. But Nick is a freak. Nearly 300 pounds in this update. But who do you prefer in this side chest? I would argue that most of you, your eyes are probably drawn to Good Vito's side chest and not Nick's. And that's how good I think Good Vito really is, pun intended. Him and Nick are very similar in stature, very similar frames to carry the muscle that they've got. And by that I mean they're roughly the same height. I believe Good Vito's 5'7". But I don't think there's any denying anymore that Good Vito is the real deal. I mean, you, got, you can't look at these updates and not say this guy is going to be a factor in the pro league. Even though he's not yet made his pro debut, this guy, he's the real deal. And I really think he's going to shock people. I think I can do another one here since uh, him and Nick both did a rear lat spread. Can put You can put their rear lat spread next to each other. Again, it's a little bit of an unfair comparison because Good Vito is nine weeks out and Nick is 17. But still, just for comparison's sake, because they are kind of a similar stature, and Nick is a top three Olympian. He's an Arnold Classic winner. He's an Arnold Classic runner-up this year. Nick is about as good as a pro gets right now outside of winning the Olympia. And then you look at Good Vito, this is a guy that hasn't even competed as a pro yet, and he looks this good comparing him to Nick Walker, who's one of the best of the best. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below about these latest updates from Good Vito, Vitaly Ugonikov. Now, next up in the news, another physique update from Andrew Jack, posing at Bev's powerhouse gym for Steve Weinberger, who's the head judge at the Olympia. Now, Andrew still hasn't given official confirmation as to what show he's doing next. Now, we do know he has to qualify still for the Olympia 2023. So he's got to do something between now and the Olympia if he's going to be doing the Olympia, which I'm assuming he is based on the shape that he's in. Now, I'm still pretty certain that it's going to be the Texas Pro, which isn't until August 18th and 19th, which would give him, I guess, five weeks out. He'd be five weeks out here. And that's a show he's already won. And it would still give him a reasonable amount of time to turn around and start an Olympia prep. But I guess we'll know at some point in the near future. But he looks good in this video, but it's hard to say how good he looks not knowing exactly which show he's competing in and then thereby not knowing how far out from the show he is. However, I think Texas is a safe bet and I think he's probably about five weeks out in this update. But let me know your guess on when we're going to see Andrew Jack compete again. Now, next up in the news, I want to talk a little bit about the Masters Olympia here. And one guy that I'm excited to see compete in that show is Robert Bernica. So back in like the early 2000 teens, I want to say 2011, 2012, Robert Bernica was this mass monster that a lot of people were talking about hitting the scene because he had these crazy arms. He was known for having these gigantic, really big arms. He was all over the magazines. A lot of people were talking about him back then. And as far as actual competitive titles, he never really went very far. But I know he went on to open like a really successful gym business. He was an MMA fighter and he did a lot of other things that I think kind of divided up his time. But now he's doing the Masters Olympia and he posted this update at seven weeks out. And I haven't seen a physique update from him in a really long time. And I got to say, I was impressed by the size that he has in this update because I, I don't really know how he's looked for the past 10 years or so. But he still looks like he's got those really freaky arms in this update. And I don't know exactly how the rest of his body looks either because he hasn't really shown much of that. Most of the updates that we have seen have been like a most muscular or a pose showing off the arms. I'll show the most muscular here too. This was at seven and a half weeks out. But he really doesn't look bad. 
On top of the guys that we already know we're going to see, um, Kamal El Gargni, we're going to see Phil Klahar, we're going to see Josh Lenardowitz, Fred Biggie Smalls, these guys that are doing the Masters Olympia, Robert Bernica is one guy that I am personally excited to see just because of kind of that nostalgia of when I was like in high school getting into bodybuilding around 2010 or 11 or 12 or whatever year you could see him in the magazines a lot. He was one of those guys where I was like, holy shit, look at the size of this guy's arms. I need to go do some more curls. So I would definitely like to see him do well at this upcoming Masters Olympia. And I think he's also a guy that I would say you should keep your eye on here. I think he's going to be dangerous. Now, next up in the news, Terrence Ruffin giving us a better idea of when we can expect to see him back on stage. Now, Terrence does have to re-qualify for the 2023 Mr. Olympia because of his placing last year being so low. He didn't re-qualify this year, so that means he's going to have to do a show. He's already went on record saying, I believe he's doing two shows before the Olympia. But in this, uh, in this post on his Facebook fan page, he said that he's three months from stepping back on stage. We're in July right now. So July, August, September would be about where he's competing. Now, there actually are a bunch of classic physique shows that are in September, but I think he's probably talking about the Legion Sports Festival show. That is going to be on the 8th of October, which if you counted the month of September, July, August, September, October, early October would be around three months still. And I think that's a big enough show that it would be a show kind of worthy of Terrence doing because Terrence is a guy that he could probably win almost any show he competes in to try to qualify for the Olympia. He's been runner-up at the Classic Physique Olympia for several years. He's one of the best in the world already. So Terrence probably doesn't want to just do any any random little show. He wants to do something competitive. He wants to do something big, and he wants to do something worthy of his talent. I mean, he is Terrence Ruffin. He's a top Olympian. My guess would be we're going to see him on stage at the Legion Sports Festival next, prior to the Olympia. So that would be my best guess, but I can't wait to see Terrence back on stage. Now, next up in the news, a recent physique update from Keon Pearson as he prepares for a guest posing this weekend. And this would be, I believe, six weeks out now for Keon. Now, at risk of sounding like a broken record, I'm going to say it anyway, but I think that Keon looks the best he's ever looked. He looks the biggest and fullest and roundest he has ever looked to me in these updates that we've seen from this prep. I think really the last year, 18 months or so, he's really kind of found himself, found his niche in the 212 division, found kind of the weight range that he belongs at. He's really filled out his frame from moving up from classic physique to 212. And I think now he really does fit. I think from a size standpoint, he's right there. I think he's exactly where he needs to be. From a shape and structure standpoint, we already know that Keon has one of the most beautiful shapes and structures, best lines, I would say, almost across all the divisions. So I think he's going to win the show. I think he's going to qualify for the Olympia. And I think he's going to go on to be in the first call out at the Olympia. But this time, I think it's going to go differently. And I think he has a chance at cracking the top three. That's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. I hope you did, in fact, enjoy it. Make sure you leave a like, subscribe, click that bell notification icon if you have not already, all that good stuff. And as always, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power, signing out. All right, guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also, check out my Instagram, at Nick Strength Power. My Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power. My secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, give that one a look. And all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day.